On has always been a bit of a different kind of running shoe company. And the Cloud Monster is a different kind of shoe, even for On. And yet, even as On has leaned heavily into this shoe's eccentricity, after 100 miles, I can't help but feel like this shoe is kind of boring. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the On Cloud Monster and how I feel about it after running a total of 100 miles in this shoe. Now before I give you my thoughts, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that On sent to me for the purpose of review, so I didn't have to pay for them, but they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and they're not gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the On Cloud Monster after 100 miles. First, let's talk about what this shoe is best for. I feel like having had some experience in the shoe now, I think the shoe is best for easy running, your daily training, the kind of stuff that you do most days at your easy paces. Now, I know that this shoe is big and it looks like it's gonna be a big, comfy, max cushion shoe. I didn't really find that it was a max cushion shoe. Like I didn't want to have it on my recovery days, on my easiest of easy days, the days where I wanted to go slowest and just kind of get the blood flowing, get the legs moving just a little bit, and I wanted to pamper myself a little bit more. I, this wasn't a shoe that I was reaching for. But if I happened to pick this shoe up on a day where I was just going for an easy run, the On Cloud Monster was a pretty good shoe for me to pick up. Like it's a good example of the cloud tech and that's these kind of like holes that are in the midsole here. And you know, I've seen a lot of other people's videos about this shoe where like they step in it and like these things just like compress like crazy. But like, I just never really got that like super squishy sensation myself when I'm either standing in them, walking around in them or running in them either. But I do feel like I felt like more of the cloudness of the shoe than in any other on running shoe that I've ever tried. So I feel like it was a good example of that. But overall, I feel like a lot of the sensation was muddled by the fact that there's a speed board in between these clouds and my foot. So down here through the middle, you can kind of hear it. There's a, a very hard piece that's in there that is supposed to kind of like help with moving things forward in a rolling motion. But ultimately, I just feel like all the bounciness kind of like gets lost in that speed board and that's really like the main thing that my foot is feeling. Now combine that with the fact that this is a bigger shoe and it does feel a little bit heavy. So I just found like that I wasn't ever like super excited to reach for the shoe on any particular day. Now that being said, let's talk about how the shoe has actually held up over the mile. Now I, I mentioned that like I haven't really been able to kind of like squish the shoe like other people can like squish their shoe when they're either holding it or standing in it. And I'm kind of disappointed in the fact that after 100 miles, I still kind of like can't do that. It still seems to be kind of like resisting me. But I also think that that's probably a good thing in terms of the resiliency of this shoe. When I see a design like this, it kind of concerns me that it's gonna kind of like get too squishy too fast. But I do feel like for me, the consistency of the ride has been very high from beginning to mile 100, which is not the end of life for the shoe by any means, but it is a good kind of longer term indicator of how the shoe is gonna perform into the end stages of its usable life. Now, in terms of the rubber outsole, there's just a little bit of signs of wear, uh, actually doing much better than I would expect for most shoes at the 100 mile mark. So I feel like overall it's holding up really well. Even the exposed areas of foam that you're running directly on are looking pretty fresh in my mind. And I will tell you that every time I make a video about on shoes, I get a bunch of people who have never tried running in on before who instantly think that this is gonna get filled full of rocks and just gunked up with a bunch of mud. I run in rocks, I run in mud in the shoe, 
And let me tell you, I've never had any mud get stuck inside the shoe, and I've never had any rocks get stuck inside the shoe either. Now, as far as the uppers go, it looks great as I typically experience in on uppers. The Swiss engineering that they talk about in this shoe is immaculate. They always have such a great design eye in their shoes, even when they're trying to make something that's kind of intentionally gaudy. It still looks really nice and buttoned up. And as far as wear and tear goes, it's holding up really well. You're gonna have a lot of longevity in terms of the usability of this upper, which overall is really comfortable to wear. But even though this might not be my favorite shoe, I do know that there are a lot of you out there who are absolutely loving the shoe. You guys have been telling me about how much you guys love the shoe. Every time I post a photo of it on Instagram, you guys are always letting me know how well the shoe is working for you, and I think that's fantastic. If you do love the shoe and wanna look for some things to pair it with, I think there's a couple of really fun options. So from a racing perspective, if we're gonna use the On Cloud Monster as the daily trainer, I feel like the Marathon Racer for you could definitely be the Adios Pro 3. I feel like you've got a lot of that European styling going on in both of these shoes. This is gonna be a much faster, much more aggressive shoe that you're not gonna run in every day, but you're gonna run in it for your races and your toughest of workouts. I feel like this is gonna be a nice speedy compliment to the on cloud monster but the other thing then i think this is kind of like a reach recommendation in terms of pairing another shoe you can possibly consider is from solomon the solomon phantasm this is another shoe that has that european styling and i think that is probably a closer kindred spirit in terms of like the way that on handles cushion and softness and what I think is a little bit too firm for my preferences but I think for certain runners that like a little bit of firmness like a little bit more roll through and snappiness the Phantasm might be a pretty interesting choice for you guys. Now, if you're not sure about the On Cloud Monster, or maybe you like it, but you wanna think about some other shoes that are kind of very similar to it, I think some things that you might also wanna consider is something that's a little bit on the softer side, but still bouncy, is the Triumph 20. Looking at these two shoes together, I feel like they're also trying to do kind of the same thing. They really both want to be daily trainers, but provide a little bit more cushion. Now, the Triumph 20, I usually put in the max cushion category, although it's kind of on the borderline a little bit. And I feel like that's kind of the same way that I'm thinking about the On Cloud Monster. It certainly looks like a max cushion shoe, but it runs like a daily trainer. So these are two shoes that I think you should be kind of having two tabs open on your laptop if you're doing some shopping. And the last shoe that I think that you should also consider if you're looking at the Cloud Monster is the Bondi Eight. Now I feel like this is kind of more like what I was expecting the Cloud Monster to feel like. So I feel like in terms of what they're trying to do, I think that the Bondi executes it maybe a little bit better, or at least for North American audiences, maybe for the European market, the On Cloud Monster is the clear winner. But I feel like depending on like the kinds of softness that you prefer, these are two shoes between the two of them, one of them you're going to really enjoy. So now let's wrap up with the buying guide. The On Cloud Monster retails for 170 bucks and it's still at that price. It's been out for a little while, but I don't see it on sale anywhere quite yet. So I think that's a lot of money for the kind of shoe that you're getting here. Something else that you might want to consider, let's say you're looking at On and you haven't tried an On shoe before, that I think I might like a little bit more is the On Cloud Stratus. There's some sizes that are available in the all black colorway that's on sale on the On website for a hundred bucks. So that could be a really nice way to kind of intro yourself into On. And if you find that you like that, once you're done with the On Cloud Stratus, then you can move on to the Cloud Monster just as something else to consider before you drop 170 bucks on this new kind of like, concept of a midsole type of technology. So those are my thoughts on the On Cloud Monster after 100 miles. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?